Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for November 2022. Coming up this month, we have a total lunar eclipse. We have the peak of the Northern Taurid meteor shower, the peak of the Leonid meteor shower. The winter circle is now rising at a much more convenient time. We also have Saturn, Jupiter and Mars gracing the night sky. Today's video is not sponsored, but if you'd like to support the channel, consider buying the 2023 What's in the Night Sky calendar. It features significant astronomical events already written into the calendar so you don't miss an event. Or you could purchase my book, Photographing the Night Sky. It's a 570 page beast of an encyclopedia into landscape astrophotography. Or you can get the Astro Workflow Lightroom presets, which help you develop an editing workflow for your astro images and help you get the most out of your images. But stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can win all of those completely free. Starting in the Northern Hemisphere, where as darkness falls, the Great Rift of the Milky Way at nice dark dust lane is standing almost vertically on the Western horizon. And as the night goes on and it sinks lower and lower, the Cygnus region of the Milky Way is left pretty low and almost vertical on the northwestern horizon. Facing north towards the circumpolar constellations and Ursa Major, the Big Bear is still in its upright position and it's skirting along the northern horizon, so it's a really good opportunity to capture it with some foreground interest. Facing south, Saturn and Jupiter continue to dominate the skies, Jupiter being the much brighter of the two, and it spends most of the month in retrograde motion, but continues direct motion at the end of the month. In the east, the likes of Auriga, Taurus, Gemini and Orion are rising a lot earlier now, and with Sirius rising at around local 11pm, the full winter circle or winter hexagon of stars are now in the night sky, before midnight, and they're also joined by Mars, which can be found retrograded in Taurus and brightens from minus 1.2 to minus 1.8 over the course of the month. Onto the southern hemisphere and facing west, there'll be a brief glimpse of the Milky Way core, with the Milky Way lying almost parallel to the horizon. But as that sinks below the horizon, it's followed by Saturn and eventually Jupiter, the much brighter of the two. Facing south towards the circumpolar constellations, the small and large Magellanic clouds spend most of the night very high in the sky, with the Carina Nebula and the Crux very low on the southern horizon, but eventually rising into the southeast. And as they do, that brings about an opportunity for a nice Milky Way arch panorama where you have the southern summer hexagon or southern summer circle towards the north of the arch and in the south of the arch you have the Carina and Colsac Nebulae and the Crux constellation. So really nice opportunity there for a summer Milky Way arch. Facing north this month you can see Andromeda, the spiral galaxy arching across the northern horizon pretty low to the foreground so you might be able to get some foreground interest with Andromeda quite easily and then that's chased across the north by the southern summer hexagon the likes of Auriga, Gemini, Taurus, Orion and they spend the night now arching across the northern horizon with Mars joining the party as well getting brighter as the month goes by. Full moon this month is on the 8th and it's the beaver moon in the Native American culture as this is the time of year when the beavers finish their winter preparations and retreat back to their lodges. As for the special events this month, so on November the 8th we have a total lunar eclipse following on from last month's partial solar eclipse. A total lunar eclipse is where the moon passes completely through Earth's shadow and as it does that it turns this gorgeous crimson red known as a blood moon and it's quite something to experience especially if you're in a dark sky location because you transition from the brightness of a full moon to skies dark enough to just about see the Milky Way. It's quite an interesting thing to experience. The event will sweep across Asia, Australia, the Americas and the Pacific and depending on where you are in the world you might see it at moonrise or you might see it at moonset or you might be able to see the whole event from start to finish but I'll put some links in the video description down below so you can find more info based on where you are in the world. Now the Southern Taurid meteor shower and the Orionid meteor shower which I discussed last month because they peaked last month they continue this month they're still active they won't produce many meteors but they are still active but we will see the peak of the Northern Taurid meteor shower this month around November the 12th to the 13th. Now unfortunately 
that is the date of a gibbous moon, so it will wash out all but the brightest meteors. But the good news is that the Taurids are known for producing a high amount of fireballs, so meteors that are brighter than the brightness of Venus, and so a lot of them should power through the moonlight. And even at the peak is only about five meteors per hour, but it's not a very sharp peak. The Taurids have a very prolonged, constant, steady rate of meteors. So it's not a sharp peak like you see with the Orionids or the Perseids. It's just a very broad period of activity. So the Northern Taurids, the Southern Taurids and the Orionids will be active this month. But the best meteor shower of this month is the Leonids and that will peak around the 17th to the 18th of November, although it's active from around the 6th to the 30th. So pretty much all of the month. And as the radiant point is within the constellation Leo, the lion, it is a meteor shower that does favor the northern hemisphere. But for those of you in the southern hemisphere, you'd be wise to face northeast in the pre-dawn hours to see some meteors pretty low on the horizon. Now the peak coincides with a waning crescent moon, which shouldn't hinder the meteors that much at all. So it's really good viewing conditions and you can expect about 15 meteors per hour and it's best viewed in the pre-dawn hours on the 18th so the night of the 17th into the 18th and you should see more meteors the closer you get to the morning twilight. The meteors are the fastest of all the meteor showers but they do often leave persistent trains so you'll see a little bit of color left in the wake of the meteor after it's burned up. And that's all I've got for you this month, guys. Now onto the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph, upload their images to social media using the hashtag Wittens, and I select my favorite three for a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place will win a copy of the 2023 What's in the Night Sky calendar. And first place wins a copy of my book Photographing the Night Sky. Last month's theme was meteors and any of the special events like the partial solar eclipse. So without further ado, in joint third place this month was SK Ganari and Sandeep Mathieu, who both captured incredible images of the partial solar eclipse. And I love the inclusion of having some foreground elements there, which really helps to give a sense of place to the image and where they were at the time of this event, rather than just capturing the eclipse on its own. I love having that foreground interest, and both of them have managed to find some really stunning foregrounds. In second place was Alison Jane with this monster of a meteor which lit up the skies above Dorset in the United Kingdom. And I just love the way that green turquoise light is even illuminating the clouds, just sort of really emphasizing just how bright of a meteor this was. And in first place was Nihal Samin, who managed to capture not only a stunning video of the eclipse with some silhouetted foreground subjects, but also a stunning meteor over the Indian Astronomical Observatory. Two absolutely stunning images to capture in a month. This month, let's go with the total lunar eclipse. It's such a special event, and I'm sure a lot of you are going to be out there shooting it, and there's so many different ways that you can shoot a lunar eclipse, so looking for stuff that's a bit creative. If you're not in a location where you can see the eclipse, I will accept any sort of moon images as well. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of What's in the Night Sky. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.